Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Sheila, and today's project is going to be dry canning. Now, mind you, this is the first time that I've ever tried it, so cross your fingers, cross your fingers, and I hope that it uh, turns out well, but I have a lot of stuff that I've purchased. I've purchased rice, um, some noodles, elbow noodles, and some pinto beans, and so I want them to keep, and so I've gone to do some dry canning today. Like I said, my first time. Y'all see those little fruit, fruit flies flying around? We have peaches. I put a bowl of apple cider vinegar because when we brought the peaches in, they were attracted uh, to the peaches. So I'm hoping, so far they've lit everywhere around it, but just not on that bowl yet. Anyway, so if you see something kind of go bzz, that's the fruit fly. I don't have too many, but I don't want them in here. Anyways, let's get started. So what I'm going to do first, guys, is that I'm going to um, wipe, kind of sanitize everything. And I've got my oven on. I've got my oven on 225 degrees. Uh, my jars have already been washed and sanitized. So I've got my lids laying out. So I'm gonna be putting that in the oven about the last 15 minutes. Uh, when I start bringing, uh, before I start bringing out all of the dry goods that's going to be in the oven. Now, the reason that we put them in the oven is because if there's any little bugs or eggs or anything that's in there, it's going to kill it out. So when you can it, you're not going to have them eating away on your dry goods. You know what I mean? So anyway, let's get started. Come on and join me. I haven't had breakfast this morning. Mr. left me he didn't even leave me a whole, he didn't even leave me a whole Pop-Tart. What's up with that? A half of a Pop-Tart? Anyway. I better eat it before the fruit flies do. Well, let me put this to the side. I've got to do, wash off my counters, counters really well. I love this stuff. This is, I've already done this, but I'm gonna still kind of do it since I have this um, Pop-Tart up here. This is Pine Sol in the blue bottle. I like it a lot better than I do that yellow stuff. I don't know what it is with that yellow stuff, man. It just, it smells like an old service station bathroom that they try to clean it up, spruce it up a little bit, and they use that yellow Pine Sol. So it's a mixture of the odors that were in there and the, that yellow pine saw, nasty, just nasty. Anyway, I like it. This is a fresh scent. It smells good. I looked all over the place. The only place that I found it was at Dollar General. And they only had, I think, three bottles left. No, five bottles. I kept two. And my cousin who came up to visit me, she does house cleaning, and she gets a lot of compliments on uh, on that spray. It's Pine Sol in the blue bottle. You need to give it a try. It's just so refreshing, you know? It just smells so much better. Anyway, like I said, I've got the, the oven on 225. And I think today I might start with, what do you think? Should we do the noodles first? Now, mind you, this is not going to be enough jars. Uh, Mr. brought up some jars that's on the deck that came out of the shed. So I've got to get those and sanitize them, wash them in the dishwasher and make sure they're really dry. Whatever you do, you want to make sure your jars are completely dry. You don't want to have any moisture in them at all because it's dry, dry food canning. You don't want any moisture. So um, I'm going to start out with this. So I know I bought some, uh, let me show you. This is so cute. And the reason I say it's cute, I'm going to do this. This is lentils and I love lentils, but I think that the bag is cute too, don't you? The reason that I'm mentioning that is because I also do crafts and I think this bag will come in handy that I can use in my crafts. Okay, on to dry canning, come on. 
So I've already washed this off and let me get the scissors. I'm going to open up the bag. Oh, I don't want to cut that. I need to cut the string and pull the string, dummy. Good grief. I knew better than that. There's a fly flying around here. Man, I'm just getting all kinds of varmints today. You know, even with like flies and stuff, which are nasty, but go get a fly swatter. As soon as you get one, they all disappear. Have you ever noticed that? Why am I having such a hard time with this? Come on. Should be able to pull it. It's not pulling very well. I like this because it's got a little edging on it as well, like a little uh, little hem that they put in the top. So, see if I can get this. I might have to go get my um, sewing hem, uh, sewing hem ripper. Yeah, that's it. Well, we'll get to it sometime today, won't we? Oh my goodness, I'm gonna cut this back. I can't deal with this, I gotta cut it. Maybe the next one, better. Right now, not. And my scissors are dull. Woo-wee. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour these in a bowl because I really don't feel like fishing them out of this bag. So let me get a bowl. I got a big bowl, so that way um, I can use the label to get them out. You know, this is going to come handy. They say with dry canning, now I don't know, this is the first time I've dry canned, but they say that with dry canning, it can last between 30 and 50 years in some instances. Like I said, I don't know. I've never done it before. Oh, keep my bag. Keep my bag. Don't throw it away. I gotta hide it because Mr. might throw it away. He always picks up stuff. I could have a drink and I'll be drinking it and it's not even, uh, I'm not even halfway finished with it. And if I turn my head, he'll come and pick up my cup and put it in the sink. It's like, stop. Because well, I thought you were finished with it. Uh, did you ask me? Anyhow. Okay. I've got the handy dandy funnel, which will help me. Now, mind you, like I said, I've already uh, washed and sterilized my jars. I've got my oven on right now at uh, 220. I thought I put it on 225. Let me go up a notch. Well, we'll just keep it at 220. Anyway, let's start putting our stuff, our dry goods, in the jar. So I'll put it here so where you can see it. Now what you want to do is you want to, when you put your dry goods in, you want to keep it to right here. Let me show you guys to uh, right there at like at that first little lip right there to give a little bit of air space. So when it starts cooling and everything, you'll have that vacuum and it will seal the top. So, let me go ahead and start. I'm so excited. Now, if it has any bugs or any eggs or whatever, I'm gonna tell you, the heat at 220, I have it now, so 225, which is okay. Uh, it will kill any of that out. And what we wanna do is we want to leave it in your oven for 90 minutes. I'm almost there. I love lentils. There's some people that don't, but I really like them. 
and you get some beef tips and cook them where they're just falling apart and put some potato, cook your lentils and then put your, and cook your beef tips where I put it usually in the crock pot to where the meat is just falling apart. Then I add that to my lentil a soup mix and um, some potatoes. So when the potatoes are done, and I, oh, I add onion too. Ooh, woo, let me tell you. And my husband doesn't really like lentils, but that's okay, more for me, right? Yep, okay, there we go. Shake them down. Okay, put this over here. I can definitely see that I'm gonna need more jars. That's funny, I got this funnel and I'm still dropping some beans. You could put crackers in here to keep any dry goods. Like I said, I have rice uh, to dry, uh, dry can. I have elbow noodles and then these, uh, did I say pintos? Pintos, rice, elbow noodles, and now, you know, these lentils. I tell you what, I don't know about some of y'all, but I had a dickens of a time to try to find elbow noodles in a big bag. Um, they're in these boxes, but I used to go to Costco, excuse, uh, Costco's, and my nose is itching, excuse me, um, oh, Costco's, and they would have uh, noodles, elbow noodles, and egg noodles in these huge bags. They don't have that anymore. I even went online to look. Then I went on to Amazon, and that's where I've got these lentils. And uh, the elbow noodles, they were limited. You could only get four boxes. So this is the size box that I got. So it's a, it's a three pound box, but it's like, what's going on with elbow noodles? I mean, is it a trend now for elbow noodles? I don't know. Let's see if I can do this without spilling the bunch. And that's okay if I still have jars left over. Then, we're gonna, of course, we'll have to open this other bag. I will put some elbow noodles in a, the uh, other jars. I don't know. We'll see. But let's go ahead and get these right now. I really wish I could open this. It's okay and some sharper scissors. Oh my goodness. There we go. So I have three and maybe a fourth. You don't want five. Where's that floss water? I bet if I show that fly the floss water, he'll go away. My husband, Mister, he said, because you know we had a few uh, flies through the summer. He said maybe we need to get one of those strips, those fly strips. Yuck! I don't want that. I mean, that's nasty. And maybe some of you use that. That's okay. But for me in my house, I don't want no fly strips like in the kitchen and you're cooking and they poor little flies get attached to this and they go bzz, 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 and all you hear is the bzz, 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 bzz. That just grosses me out. And then the dead flies. Oh, no. Not in this house. Maybe outside. Oh, let me tell you a story about that. My oldest son got a fly strip that he put outside because he's got a wood, wooden house and has a cow pasture next to it. So 
I guess when the the house heated up that all the flies were attracted now to the side of his house. He said he went out there and there were hundreds of flies. Yuck. So he said, okay, well, I'm going to get one of those fly strips and he put it there on his deck and he has cameras and something set off the camera or something. I might be telling a little bit wrong. The bottom line of it is, I guess a, a bird saw one of the little flies or several flies going, zzz, 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 you know, making that noise and trying to get off the fly paper. Well, the bird was attracted to it. So the bird flies into the fly trap and he gets stuck. So my son had to put on a pair of gloves and go out and... Oh, pitiful, just pitiful. He said that he uh, it was a couple of feathers that came out, but you know what? He at least got the, the poor little bird off that flypaper. And he says it's a wonder that he didn't get himself wrapped because if he got it wrapped, I mean, he, the bird probably wouldn't have made it. And I just thought that was so sad. So I guess we have to kind of watch out for stuff like that. Maybe that's why the people use them on the inside. I don't know. This might be all I'm going to be able to do today. But that's okay. So I could get my other jars clean. So the bottom of the moral of that story is no fly paper. Not for this house. Isn't this pretty? Oh my gosh. This is going to be some good eating later on. I love canning. This was my first year because we were, we moved from the city to here in the mountains, we were up on the mountaintop, and we named it Hallelujah Holler. Actually, one of my friends on Facebook uh, named it for me because I was asking everybody, what's a good name? Because I want to put a sign up at the end of the drive. And so she came up with that. I had all kinds of names, but that just kind of... I don't know, it kind of just registered with me, like, that's a really good name, because Hallelujah Holler. Not that we're in a holler, per se, but I like the Hallelujah in it, because when we moved up here, it's like, Hallelujah, from city life to mountain life. It's been an adjusting. Uh, the lifestyle is some the same, but a lot different. Um, we had a huge garden. We had to put up a fence. Let me tell you, living in a manufactured home, when we moved up here, oh, let me get this, let me get this. I know y'all y'all are tuning in to see about dry canning. Oh no, I'm not gonna have enough. And I don't have any more lentils. Oh, I know what, I'll use one of the small jars. Be right back. Ha, one of my clean jelly jars. So, I think that'll work good. What was I saying? Oh, so we love the land. We were mesmerized by the land when we moved here. That was really the selling point. We have about 17 acres. And I have, uh-oh, I have crab apple trees, peach trees. I've never had a peach tree before. Where can I put this and we had peaches galore. I think the frost kind of got to them. So a lot of them were bad, but there were a few good ones. Like I said, I brought it here. But I made some, first time ever, making peach jam. I'm, we had a huge crab apple tree. And so I made uh, crab apple jelly. I've given some away. So I can shake this down here. There we go. Crab apple jelly. Uh, that was good. I haven't tried the peach uh, jam yet. It's all um, jarred up, but I just haven't opened it up yet. I'm really trying to put some stuff back. You know, in the winter, to have you know canned peaches that you know there's fresh canned peaches, not store bought and that syrup and stuff. But your own, it's just something gratifying about that. And to be able to pull out later on, maybe some pintos. 
I eat pintos a lot. We like pintos. I think I don't want to, maybe a little bit here. I'm trying to shake it down. And yay, it's done. So I'm going to have to clean that out. So what you do now, I've had the oven going. So I since I only has got two, four, six, and a little one. So I'm going to put up some of these lids because I don't want to ruin them. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I think maybe you count again. One, two, three, four. Yes. Six lids that I will be adding into uh, the oven about 15 minutes before I take these out. Now remember that you want to keep it in there for at least 90 minutes. So I'm going to have to put the timer on. Um, you, 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 you put your lids in there to get hot so the seals will get hot. And also to kind of sanitize it, uh, you know, if, any, if anything's on it as well. But then when you, I get them out, well, I was told, because like I said, this is the first time I did it, it's not to pull all the jars out at the same time because you want to keep them, they're going to be hot, mind you, for 90 minutes in there, but it kills out all the little bugs and um, any little eggs or if there's anything in there, it's going to kill it. And that's what we want to do. But you pull out one at a time and, and I'll show you as we go along. And then you put your, uh, wipe your lids off with a clean, dry paper towel to make sure there's no dust particles or anything that's on there. And you put your lid on and you seal it and you put it over to the side and you wait. You wait till you start hearing the pinging. So I'm excited, y'all! I'm just so excited for my first dry canning. So let me, since I only have these few, I want to put them on a um, on a tray. So hold up. Here we go. Yay! I hope they all fit. Maybe not. Let's see. One, two, three. Well, the big ones will, and I'll just get another little tray and put the put the little one on. Well, little bread pan. You could probably just put them on the rack, but I just I don't know. I just feel a lot more comfortable for me to put them in a little tray. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put them in the oven and let them cook for 90 minutes. It was supposed to be 225. Uh, some say from 110 to 225 or something like that. Um, I guess I just didn't, wasn't paying attention. I got it at 220, but it's gonna be fine. So let's go ahead and put them in the hot oven. Ooh, it's heavy. Those are, here's this one. Okay, I'm gonna put my timer on. So 90 minutes, you hit start on the timer. And now we wait. So I've gotta get the other uh, jars cleaned up that are outside, uh, they, my dishwasher stopped. So I'm gonna bring those in and get them cleaned up and put them in the dishwasher so I can make sure I get them sanitized very well. My next thing will probably be the pinto beans. Let's go and get all the beans done. Then we can get to the rice and the noodles next. So I'm gonna get over here and I'll see you in about 90 minutes. Okay, we've got 11 seconds. It's been 90 minutes, 15 minutes ago. I put in my lids in a one of those tin pans so the lids will get hot, the seals will get hot. Hear it? Come on. Okay, now remember guys, the jars should be extremely hot. So I've got my little mittens. I'm gonna get them out because I don't want to scald my hands. So I've got my rings here. 
um, I've got a towel here just because those hot jars, I don't want to case anything that was wet or anything. I don't want it, you know, hitting, uh, hitting that and bust my jar or something. I don't know. I'm just very precautious like that. But anyway, let's go ahead and get it out. I'm so excited. Here we go. I'm going to take one at a time out just because they're so hot and I want to keep them hot as I do it. So I'll do one. Remember, they're hot, 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 hot. And I'm going to get me a lid out. Oops, I can get in here. There we go. Remember what I said, I've got me a dry napkin. I'm going to wipe the top. I'm going to put the lid on. There we go. Pew, pew. It's hot. Guys, it's so hot. Then I'm going to put the ring on. So, I'm going to be careful with y'all's hands because I'm telling you. So, we're going to tighten it as tight as I can. <clears throat> One down. Then I'm going to take it over here and set it on my towels to let them be sealing. Hopefully we'll hear some ping pings. Next. Yowie yowie. I need these lids where I can reach them better. I can't reach them too good here. Okay, here we go. I don't know if I keep it like that. Jars are so hot, you know, that even if the rubber part is on this really, really hot jar, it should seal. Though I prefer it been in there for 15 minutes, but I miscounted. And remember, get it as tight as you can. Now I kept the jars in there for 90 minutes, and that's to kill out any bugs or eggs or anything that's that could be in there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You ever bought some? I remember, I'll tell you a story. I remember a long time ago, I was really young then, and <laughs> I lived in this little, uh, this place that was right next door an old curb market and the gentlemen that ran it they were old as well but they were sweet just sweethearts I remember one time I went over I wanted to make a cake so I went to the store and I bought a cake mix and I brought it home excited got everything ready and opened that box and poured it into my bowl and there were bugs all in it. Bugs, all, you know, if I hadn't really looked closely, I could have seen where all the, the, the holes and those, oh. Anyway, I took it back and he said, well, you can go get another one. Well, I went back there to the shelf, bless their heart. And most, all of their boxes had those little bugs on them. Guess who didn't have a cake that day? All right, I think the last jar and hopefully, like I said, that lid, you know, it should be okay with it being on this hot jar. Now, what did I do with my little thing, my jig? Oh, there it is. Let me go get it. So far, did I already do this? Make sure. I haven't heard any pings, but it's gonna take a minute because it's really, really hot. Mm. 
And remember to tighten them as tight as you can. And just put them over to the side and don't mess with them. You just let it do its thing. So I've gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, six quarts and one little pint um, full of lentil beans that I'm gonna be putting up. I'll probably get another bag of lentil beans so I can do some more dry canning. But I have a lot of elbow noodles that I'm gonna do, pinto beans and rice. I've got a big, was like maybe a 20 pound bag, 25 pound bag of rice, just white rice that I'm also gonna be putting in jars. Um, a lot of people have been using the, the half gallon jars. I mean, I'm old and I don't know where I've been in the city, I reckon, but I, I didn't even know that there was such a thing because most of the time you just see the quart size, you know, the pints, the half pints, and I didn't do much canning back in the day, but um, I think that that would, would just hold a lot more and especially when you get ready to cook something, you know, you don't have to open up two jars. And the jars take up a lot of room. If you had the, the um, half gallon jars, it seemed like it would just be a lot more effective. But, you know, use what you got, right? Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the kitchen. And I'm going to sit over in my chair, drink me some tea, and listen for the pings. That's exciting, isn't it? Just the pings, just the sound of the pings. And I might work on editing uh, one of my other videos as well. If you guys liked my video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe and maybe share. That would be great. But anyhow, I hope you learned something. My first time uh, dry canning, easy peasy. Really, it's easy. So I challenge you to try some. You'll love it. Anyway, let me get in there and start editing my old video and listen for the pings. And we'll talk later. Bye, guys. Remember, I love you and Jesus loves you more. <laughs>